Um, but the second objection here is an interesting one. I've seen people uh, I've Sean on his debate with Will and Craig talk about this and it's the idea that the theme has no explanatory power with regards to like the natural sciences. Um, so maybe they'd say like, you know, we can observe the cosmos and all of these things. And it seems like it's just naturalism. Like we observe natural forces behind um, maybe like the shifting of planets or like the formation of stars and such. Um, so theism though, there's no scientific tests that provide this like explanatory power to like, kind of like give legs to the theistic idea. Um, so a little bit similar objection to the first one, but a little bit different. So how would you respond to that kind of objection, Charles? Well, at the risk of um, circling around the same point, I would say that mm -hmm. we actually have a clearer grasp of intentionality and purpose of activity. We wouldn't, again, we wouldn't have science without being able to, um, just even the, even, even the project of explaining whatever, extraterrestrial planetary motion or terrestrial movement, all of this presupposes a clearer grasp of what it is to do things purposefully and intentionally. So the whole idea that we have a clearer grasp of, um, I don't know, subatomic parts than we do of the mind, it gets it backwards. We would have no concept of atomic theory motion unless we had a grasp of the idea of atomic motion, the concept of uh, atomic and subatomic parts. So this idea that you, we, yeah, so it's, it's really the intentional purposive world that is more, is foundational if you're going to have science at all. Um, you know, if you say, how can we account for science? Well, you can't account for science without presupposing purpose of intentional explanations. And that's the kind of explanation that comes into play with theism. Mm. That is the belief that there is a transcendent, all powerful, all knowing, all good divine reality that sustains, intentionally creates and sustains the cosmos. That's all intentional purposive forms of explanation. And we know those work because we know it in our own person. Mm. So what you're saying here then is um, we have this tool of science, which is so good at um, helping us understand things around us and like all these amazing things regarding to the subatomic level and, and such. But we have to like in the first place, just ask like, what is science? Why can't we do science even in the first place and kind of get like beneath the surface almost um, with regards to this se second objection? I think that's right. And and as a matter of fact, so as not to repeat the earlier points, but um, science actually presupposes ethics. It, presuppose, it doesn't ex ex explain ethics, it, it seems to me, but you can't do science without ethics, minimally um, of truth-telling, of, of careful observation, of um, not falsifying the data, and so on. And also, we, we should keep in mind that in the history of science, is built on collaboration. And this is where you actually have to trust others. That's never been bigger than right now during the pandemic. Mm. Labs, uh, I just happen to know personally from um, in New York, let's say labs that used to compete like Cornell and Southern Manhattan and um, Columbia, the northern part, the west side, these labs would compete for grants and so on, but now, they couldn't be closer in terms of sharing absolutely every, all the data. And so, again, science makes a very interesting um, object to consider. A philosopher Whitehead once said, a scientist who tries to establish that there's no such thing as purposiveness is a very interesting object of observation. Because the person is winding up purposefully trying to establish there's no such thing as purpose. Mm. But there are people that do that.